What's up, YouTube? Here's another prediction check after the Japanese Grand Prix. But before we start, this is the chart I showed you a couple of days ago with the championship span as of the Russian Grand Prix with Vettel with 75 points in span. But he had a huge pile of cock-ups during the Japanese Grand Prix, bringing his span down to 33 instead of the 40 we were thinking beforehand. Now, of course, during the Japanese Grand Prix, he, the, we did have the intervention of Ferrari International Assistants, but whatever the case, it is pretty much guaranteed that the championship is nearly over. So, here's our predictions. Kimi, of course, will not retire. He's, he's going to be back in Sauber. Four teams winning races. I did not update the chart, uh, so I guess by the following race I'm just going to to eliminate those icons. So, yeah, no one. No one. No one other than the top three can win any race. It's still mathematically possible, so we're not pulling it off yet. Honda, good races, bad races, good, good but unreliable. We've had that point since China. Um, you may remember Pierre Gasly in B4 and the Toro Rosso's coming together in China. So, yeah. And this is the count of, um, of power unit components a couple of races ago. And I think no one got penalized for engine components in Japan, so I didn't really check. Uh, 15 cars getting engine penalties, We've, we already have that point, and I think it is remaining constant. But I'm gonna check before the US Grand Prix. Big crash causing a hello controversy, we've had that since Belgium for that little crash, and in fact in Spain because of that Formula 2 incident. Super hard, we saw the we saw the hard in Silverstone, but we are not going to see the super hard ever. Um, Liberty Media overcompensate on grid girls, of course they overcompensated on grid girls, not them, but Singapore Airlines by saying that the grid girls are good brand ambassadors and yada yada yada. Yeah, straight. They did spice up the pre race show by introducing that now famous intro that we all dance to and we don't know yet if the 2021 rules will or will not include the MGUH. Bottas is P3 at the moment and pretty far up. In fact, you may recall that it was still four by Singapore and then and then over overtook Kimi by Russia and now has expanded that gap. So, yeah, we're scoring him a half point because Toto Wolf is basically doing everything to make him look as a wingman and inferior and blah 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 blah. So he probably he probably wants to help us with this point, even though Bottas is doing a lot not to find himself in that situation. So half point for that. Red Bull signing Alonso? Nope, he will be retiring. After, save, after brilliantly winning the 24 hours of Le Mans. And of course, Red Bull Honda is a thing starting next season, so that's kind of old news by now. One new race winner, Chamber probably doesn't like this, but I am counting Max Verstappen for Austria without a Kvyat boost. And of course, Kvyat is back for the next season. Vettel outscoring Kimi 2 to 1. This is a critical point of this on the season when it comes to that prediction because Raikkonen has 196 points, and twice that, uh, Vettel cannot reach it. Even if even if Raikkonen doesn't score another point, if Vettel wants to score one and a half times 
Raikkonen Stally. He has to score another 30 points and hope that Raikkonen doesn't score another point again. Although it is technically possible for him to score a few more points, but it's gonna be hard. But one and a half, and we get the full, and we and we get the half points. The full points, no. Uh, someone getting a penalty ban? Well, kind of halfway because of Roman Grosjean in Italy. Um, Red Bull finishing second. It's still not mathematically guaranteed, mathematically impossible, but we basically know it's not going to happen. Um, Ferrari has 460 points of contractors. Red Bull Racing has 3 319, and the maximum possible for Red Bull is 491. Uh, if Ferrari doesn't score another point, Red Bull would be would have the slim possibility of being second. We know it's not gonna happen, but until it's mathematically impossible, I'm not calling that off. Williams finishing P7 or worse. That one is pretty much guaranteed, but because of the narrow gap in the midfield and the small amount of points there, it's not going to be able to call that mathematically impossible until Abu Dhabi. So, yeah. Um, rubbish red flag, we've had that since Monaco because of that loose manhole cover. And that gives us a total of 11.5 out of 25 in the chamber board. One point away from the halfway and approaching the, um, the, the what I think is the maximum possible. Well, you can you can bring another another two points there, but yeah, we're approaching our maximum. Where we are really approaching our, our maximum is in my predictions board, unless we can we can get one of the extra points. But first, this point this extra point in red because it's cancelled. Geography now did not mention Formula One in the Mexico episode. Safety car. Um, uh, so this one is for safety car in Mexico. I'm gonna be watching from the grandstands, and there is if, if there is a safety car in any of the categories running, and I manage to take a photo of it and post it into Instagram, that is a full point. There. No one, of course, has come out of the closet, and probably will not, so that point will probably will be cancelled as soon as Abu Dhabi has rolled on. Alonso did make a wrestling pick reference, well, not precisely him, but Formula 1 management. Um, topless photos, of course, um, we've, we can do the recount there. Russia joke, I was taking a, a joke made by Force India in Canada, but uh, somebody posted this about Russia. Because as we all know, in Mother Russia, car drives you. Um, Kimi Raikkonen angry on Team Radio, we've had that since Hungary. You forgot to connect the drink, is the drink? Is it on now? Okay, I'm not. Uh, we don't got to connect, Jimmy. You will not have the drink, sorry. Is it on or not? Crushes in Monaco in Singapore. We've had that point since, well, Singapore. This is the Monaco crash between Leclerc and, and Hartley. And this is the Monaco, is the Singapore crash between the Force Indias. A race with no DNS, we've had that since China, well, the half point. And Roman Grosjean, of course, was disqualified from Italy because of that illegal floor thing. Hamilton, Princess Dressgate pretty much speaks for itself at this point. I'm so sad right now. Look at my nephew. Why are you wearing a princess dress? Is this what you got for Christmas? <laughs> Why did you ask for a princess dress for Christmas? Boys don't wear princess dresses! Um, Florida 
uh, non ninja speaker of Spanish giving an interview in Spanish. We've had that since Spain with um, Felipe Massa. Ten races with with a Vesla drama with um, well, including Japan. That's fourteen, and we've had that point for a while. This is our um, our drama. The um, whole Max Verstappen issue. Um, back of the grid twice. Well, no one this race, but we have all that chart. Yeah, I think we should stop counting it. I'll count it at the end of the season for the one final time. Verstappen was driver of the day in, um, well, has been driver of the day a total of three times now. And, um, well, Driver of the Day's score, I did not update it, but count four for Ricciardo. And still no one has gotten seven points and it's beginning to seem unlikely. Ocon on the podium, yes, that has happened um, in qualifying in Belgium. And because of the superiority of the top three teams, this is as far as we're going to get. That's the bad. That is the three. The three. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes! Woo! Well done, guys! Well done! Yes. It's Hamilton, the tell you. Oh my god. Um, no injuries or deaths. We've had that point cancelled since Bahrain because of the whole Francesco Sigorini thing. Andres Manuel losing the general election, no, he won by an absolute landslide and he will be sworn in as president of Mexico on the 1st of December. Verstappen doing something stupid, this time it was Vettel doing something stupid but we have that point since China and this is a photo of him in Monaco. We've of course gotten very much used to the halo, especially since Spain and Belgium. This photo is from Belgium. Pit stop problems, 10 races. Um, well, count another one for Japan. I didn't update this one, so that's 15, including Japan with only Azerbaijan and Italy going unscathed. Um, oh yeah, that photo is from Russia. Uh, uh, Force India did smash into each other, please excuse that Instagram notification. Um, they did crash into each other in Singapore. Um, 19th of September did go wrong because of that Force India crash. Both for me and for Esteban Alcon. So, yeah, that's 18 out of 25, or for a total of 25 and 29 and a half points as of today, sorry I didn't update the date, it's uh, for the 8th of October. And let's look back at the championship span. This is the formula and so far, after the Japanese Grand Prix, we have 5 rounds to go with 331 points for Hamilton. That, um, you, re you may remember this charge from the Russian Grand Prix with Vettel having 75 points. I didn't update the colors for the Japanese Grand Prix, but yeah, Vettel has just 33 points and is in serious danger. We've gotten, we are now on the critical point of the season, but the Constructors' Championship is still nowhere near over and surprisingly McLaren has been one point, one point behind Sahara for the entirety of the second half of the season. He hasn't, they haven't scored a point since Belgium, which means Sahara probably, which means if things continue the way they are, McLaren will remain P7, with Sahara Force India remaining in P6. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? No, at least the karma for Princess Dressgate has lifted. Um, the Constructors Championship is still closed, is, is now closed between Mercedes and Ferrari, but still nowhere near over with a span of 94 points. So they will not close the championship in, um, 
in the US and probably not on Mexico, but maybe in Brazil. Because they have already more than a 1 2 in difference. So, um, and finally, you can follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you in two weeks' time for the US Grand Prix. See you later.